Okay, let's get started. Um, this is uh, just a quick video to show you a little bit about dCloud, um, its setup usage and, and benefits. Um, first off, you want to go to config and then dCloud FTP server. You'll enter in your um, cloud credentials and um, you uh, enter in your own encryption password. This is made by you and kept by you. I don't want to know it. Next you'll go to dCloud and we'll get started. Uh, within dCloud, um, the first thing you notice is you have the dCloud malware scan definitions at the top and a last merge date. What this does is it merges your malware scan definitions, your various white lists and black lists used by malware scan with dCloud. Um, this is especially useful if you have uh, multiple copies of D7, um, you're using D7 on a remote, or you have multiple technicians and you want to keep all of those definition files on all of the various copies of D7 in sync with each other. So you would merge, after a change, you would merge your, your definitions to dCloud and then um, merge them from your other copies of D7 so they would all be in sync. Next we have the uh, save concurrent configuration and the config browser. Basically, just give your config a name and click save current config to dCloud. Now that configuration will always be available to you through dCloud. You can make changes to that configuration and re-upload. For example, if you're uh, using D7 on a remote or something of that nature, you need to, um, you need to uh, update your configuration. Um, you can do that and then have that, have that available for download by your other copies of D7. It's also useful for storing multiple configs and like I mentioned a remote you can um, have a config for remote only. Um, you can have a config for bench work, uh, light and heavy cleanup or, or what have you. So I have my different configs here and to switch to a new configuration that's saved to dCloud you just need to double click on it and it will download that configuration. Now you will have to restart D7 for all the changes to take effect. Um, next we have previous versions down here and if you click view previous versions <clears throat> this should pull up a list of um, there we go a list of previous D7 versions that we have to choose from in case there's a bug or something with a new version of D7 um, you can go to a previous version and then we have download and create um, cloud launcher F SFX um, this actually creates this file here DCL underscore SFX. Um, what that is is a um, self-extracting executable. You can see it is 284 kilobytes in size and in fact I'll just take you through the process right now. Let's create one. Um, you want to choose uh, if the archive should self-delete after extraction. Uh, you may or may not use, want to use this depending on how you're going to use this. Uh, most people will use this with a toolbox feature in their remote support software which you double click on a file on, the on your local system and it runs that file on the remote system. So you don't necessarily want it to delete itself after extraction in that case. I'll select no. And then the next thing we are prompted for is should uh, the cloud launcher prompt you for a configuration or should it select one automatically from dCloud? And I'll have it select my foolish IT configuration. And then the next uh, option is would you like D7 to extract to the desktop or extract to a specified folder below? Uh, now don't add a drive letter. Um, one will be added for you. Um, that will be the drive letter of the local OS partition. So we'll just save that config and now the launcher is created. Like I said it's 284 kilobytes so you can just double click this it will quickly and easily transfer to your remote uh, system that you're providing support to. It will automatically download the latest D7 from my website and your latest configuration that you selected from dCloud. 
Moving on, um, the other benefits of dCloud are definition sharing. You have various definitions within D7, and as, as I discussed, you have your malware scan definitions. Um, there's also auto uninstall, startup kill, um, and kill them all whitelist. Um, now, I don't share any blacklists in, in um, uh, dCloud's definition sharing uh, just because of the potential of uh, a user adding a, a possibly good item to a blacklist and we don't want that you know just being blindly added uh, by other users to their configuration sets so we don't share blacklists at all but we do share whitelists um, what you do is just click on that uh, option to view um, that particular definition set and I don't appear to have internet right now oh, wait now it's coming back apologize for the slowness here having a sketchy internet connection is going to cause issues with the cloud so um, unfortunately I'm running on a sketchy internet connection right now but um, let me get started with this um, we have a cloud master list which is um, the the master list of everyone's definitions who chooses to share them via this button with the cloud um, what you can do is just browse through those and say, oh, I, I never like uh, MicroTorrent or um, this and that and the other. And you can add these items to your list. So once they're saved onto your list, um, they will be available to you for the next time you use that particular function that requires that particular definition file. Um, some people go through and just select all. I don't really recommend doing that but then again there are a lot to look through um, obviously no one wants a coupon printer um, or conduit toolbar which I just saw but um, then there are things that you may want like the catalyst control center localization files for example um, next we have custom app sharing this uh, this uh, with this button rather you can share all of your custom apps with the cloud list and in this list here you see everything that was shared with the cloud list um, there are a bunch of different uh, configurations here that aren't available um, inside D7 itself you can just click on the file to get the setup for that um, you can choose to actually manage your apps directly and that's not really related to this you can choose to remove app from the cloud in case it's a bad app or doesn't belong there for some reason or another and you can upload you can make changes directly to that app and upload them to the cloud if you see uh, a, a mistake um, in the configuration these these buttons allow you really to allow the community of cloud users to police themselves um, with these configuration sets and then finally you can import the app to your own configuration and then you'll select the area below where you want to import that app to and finally we have script sharing and let's check that internet right now looks like we're timing out again but I am getting a few scripts oh, oh it's coming in now uh, basically with the script sharing um, there is a section of D7 which I will show you um, for your custom scripts uh, and our timeouts are causing D7 to freeze I do apologize for that but on the main menu of D7 you have a uh, custom scripts and um, you can input your own custom scripts there uh, configured through D7's config of course and a lot of people have um, configured their own scripts and they want to share them with the cloud so you would use the share my scripts button um, if I had internet connection you would be able to 
click on one of these scripts to highlight it and click the preview script button and that will basically open the script in notepad and allow you to view what that is and then of course the download selected scripts button will download those scripts to your custom scripts config and make them available for you should you wish to use them in the future well I wish that uh, my internet connection wasn't so flaky so I could actually finish showing you that but I hope you've gotten the idea of um, what dcloud can do for you and your technicians if you have any more questions or ideas for future videos send them to foolishtech at foolishit.com and I will see what I can do about that thanks again for watching